Hi, I'm Zane Lamprey. Welcome to Three Sheets in the Czech Republic. In this episode, I ate cheese that smelled like a dead dog. My dog died last year. And this is, and this honestly, this smells worse than my dog. I drank absinthe, the green fairy. You ever drink so much you take your clothes off and run around naked? Yes. Yeah, me too, brother. And I took a bath in beer. It's a, it's a good show. You, you'll like it. Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. <laughs> Warning, if you drink absinthe, you might actually fly. <laughs> You'll see what I mean later. But first... The Czech Republic, home of the original Bohemians, also home of the original Pilsner beer. The smile in Prague. Drink beer. Czech Republic. It's a tough job to drink beer in Czech Republic. I have many questions for this place. First, absinthe. Whether you spell it with an E like the French, drop the E like the Czech, or call it absinthium, it's all the same. And I'm gonna find out if some of the folklore about this infamous drink is true. Like, does it really make you convulse like a madman? You like it? No. <laughs> Then why do they think drinking so much of this stuff is good for you? And will the smelliest pre-drink snacks known to man really empower me to drink more than I ever thought possible? I'll test that theory. Oh, smell that. Smell it. Then, after drinking like a check... I'm here! Will bathing like a check refresh me or get me lager log? Find out when I go... Three sheets to check! Welcome to Czech Republic, the city of Prague. Okay, so here I am, the city of Prague. But I'm not here to hang out with sketch artists. My first of many missions, try something I've honestly never had before. What's up, Captain? How are you? Hand pound. What do we got here? Absinthe? Yeah, absinthe also known as the Green Fairy. We call um, my friend Curtis the Green Fairy. Its supporters say it can bring you to a higher consciousness. Its detractors say it can cause seizures, make you hallucinate, and make you crazy. Van Gogh liked it, and he was crazy. I hope I don't cut my ear off later. What's your favorite? My favorite? Yeah. I don't like this. All right, the guy who sells it doesn't like it. That's weird, and maybe not such a good thing. I got an idea. Let's go to an absinthe bar. That's just what I'm looking for. The Green Fairy, and I'm not talking about the camera guy. Check, please. Oh, there's one right there. <laughs> How do we drink uh, it? You can drink it like a two ways. First way, it's a Czech way. OK. Hot Let's... way with fire. I want to do it the Czech way. Yeah. This is the Czech way of doing things. The best way. The Czech way involves a lot of sugar. First, sugar cubes are dipped into the absinthe. I don't need any sugar. I'm sweet enough. Because <laughs> I'm sweet. You will need this one. Yeah, you probably will. Right. OK. Pour it over the sugar. Yeah. Then they're lit on fire. I don't know if you know anything about me, but I love fire. One of the cubes is cooked in the absinthe flames. hey <laughs> Once the sugar is melted, it's time to drink it. Wow. I drink the whole thing? Yep. And then I take a piece of sugar? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh my god. What just happened? Uh, here's what happened. I just downed wormwood-based alcohol. So is it gonna have some strange effect on me unlike any other alcohol? I think this is a question for the dorky professor. Absinthe is the only hard liquor in the world made from a wormwood. Wormwood contains small amounts of a compound called thujone, which many people believe has hallucinogenic properties. It is the reason absinthe was outlawed for years. Today, it is legal in the European Union, but only if the thujone levels are at or below the imposed regulatory standards. Back to you, Zane. Oh my god, it's, it burns a little bit. Of course it burns. It tasted like high-octane, pine-scented furniture cleaner. But I still haven't cut off my ear. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So, give me more of it. This time, like the French do it. Instead of sugar and fire, it's sugar and water. You're gonna dilute it with water. You're gonna mix it with water yeah, yeah. and make it not as It's pain, a classic painful. way. One time I took my friend Steve and I, I tied him down like this and I had the, the faucet uh -huh. dripping on his head and it made a hole in his forehead. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a funny son of a bitch. You don't know Steve? He's pretty famous back in the States. He's on that show, uh, Three Sheets. Yeah, yeah, whatever, it's a stupid show. Okay. I gotta be honest. I think the reason they have all these elaborate rituals is to distract you from the taste. So, how is it? It makes my, uh, it makes my nipples hard. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you have it? Drink it, drink it. <laughs> she works at an absinthe bar and she, doesn't, and she doesn't like the taste of it. Yeah, I like it. I think one more taste. Oh, I like it. I think one... <laughs> Sort of oh, so some people, um, some people like it. Yeah, some people like it very much. Excuse me, do you like this? No. <laughs> how can you guys, how can you guys work at an absinthe bar and you don't even like absinthe? We are working with this every day, you know. Well, I listen. I when I bartended for three years, I loved alcohol, loved it. Do you like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've searched the entire bar and cannot find one person who likes the stuff. But wait, there is some absinthe that's probably delicious. It's got a f***ing beetle in it. Of course, this is very tempting, especially when prepared Czech style. But why should I have all the fun? Hey, Christina, can you take the camera so we can have Curtis try this, please? That's right, it's time for another Three oh. Sheets Team Taste Test. It smells like a dead beetle. Chug it. That's <laughs> You don't need the water. You want the water? You don't need the water. Do you want it? <laughs> yeah, but why stop it, Curtis? You want the water? Now it's Christina, the producer's turn. <laughs> no, come on, the whole thing. Oh, come on. Get her, she's gonna throw up. Just finish it, it's a drinking show. If I have to do it three times, you have to drink one. Just finish it. You're such a soul. I know, of course I am. <laughs> oh, oh, that is great television. Oh, my goodness. So I never found anyone who liked absinthe. Not even Pleplius the monkey. Okay, enough. But I liked the way it made me feel. <laughs> and on that note, it's time to float on out of here because my Bohemian Blitz has only just begun. Can you teach me how to drink in Prague? <laughs> Coming up, see if extremely bad smelling food can give me an extremely high tolerance for beer. You can drink, for example, 10 beers. Plus, the battle of the Budweiser. All right, we're in day two of my bohemian binge through the Czech Republic. I've danced with the Green Fairy, and I'm still flying high. 
I didn't go into convulsions, and I didn't cut off my ear. Two for two. Now onto new Czech challenges, starting at a massive beer hall called Uveg Voodoo, where they serve up what might be the smelliest thing I've ever eaten in my mouth. Yeah, this one oh, is sticks. Sticks. And what is this? It smells bad. It's a beer cheese. Beer cheese? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you sure it's not wet dog cheese? Yeah. Because <laughs> it smells like wet dog. The best is to put a drop of a beer here okay. and then to mix it. Show me. So you put in some beer and then you mash it with some onions and some mustard. Okay, moment of truth. It's good. There we go. Oh, yeah. After this, if you will eat this, you can drink, for example, 10 beers. Really? 10 beers for the drink. If eating stinky cheese will help me hold down 10 beers, then what will this do for me? <clears throat> okay, so what's this? This is a knee of pork. Knee of pork? Knee of pork, yeah. Is a knee of pork anything like a moose knuckle? Do you know Steve McKenna? No, no, anyway, I don't know. When he wears um, Speedos, yes. you know, the, the tiny little yeah. sausage, yeah. and we, we call it, it looks like a moose knuckle. Because yeah. all this junk yeah. is all yeah. twisted yeah. together, yeah. yeah. So we, that's my friend Steve, and he has a uh, moose knuckle. This is not a moose knuckle. No, this is not Nothing a to do with knuckle. Steve. This yeah. is a pygmy. This is a pygmy. Yeah. It's a knee of a pig. Yeah. Okay, so what do you do here? Oh! And the sauces? What sauces do I put on it? Taste every. All of them. A little, oh, bit, of these, a little bit of these. A little bit of these. A little bit of these. The mustard. Okay. And the bread. And the bread. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. But the question remains: Will it get me through my day of drinking? Now I can drink. Yeah. Ten beers, and I'll be fine. After we eat this, twenty beers. Wait a minute. Time out. What did he just say? This calls for a three sheets instant replay. <laughs> After this 20 beers. 20 beers? <laughs> if I'm hungover, I'm gonna come 15, back to maybe you. 15. Okay. 15 is fine. Considering how they drink in the Czech Republic, it's not surprising that someone could get through 15 beers in a night. This is not drinking. This is drinking. Yeah. Note the number of gulps. Oh, I see. I didn't drink enough of it. Oh. <laughs> The kind of beer I'm drinking, by the way, is Pilsner Urkel, which literally translates into original Pilsner. And to find out more about this true original beer, I'm off to the Golden Tiger. Okay. Here they serve only one thing, Pilsner Urkel. That's it. And they serve it to perfection. You never have to order, you never wait for a refill, they just keep them coming. Four sushis. World leaders, celebrities, and now I, Zane Lamprey, love this place. Man, I could use a beer. Hey-oh! Oh. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! The guy I'm drinking with is an official Pilsner Urkel brewmaster. Pilsner Urkel, it means Pilsner beer from original source. The original Pilsner. Yeah. So what is the historical significance of this so-called original Pilsner? In 1842, Bavarian brewmaster Josef Grohl brought his techniques for making lager beer to the West Bohemian village of Pilsen. Using the local hops, pale malt, and the signature soft water of the region, he developed a unique, crisp, clean lager that has since come to be known as Pilsner. Gosh, that's good Pilsen. All right, back to the Golden Tiger. There we go. And what do you say? Nostravi. Nostravi, it means for your health. For my and health. When we, when we drink Pilsner Opel, we really drink for your health. Really? Because it contains many, many healthy compounds. You hear that? For my health. For your health. Okay, so I get it. They're serious about their Pilsner here. 
and they're also serious about their Budweiser. That's right, their Budweiser, the one that originated here in the Czech Republic. Time for a beer brawl. We all know and love the king of beers, but there's another lesser known Budweiser that's been brewed in the Czech town of Budvar since the year 1265. In fact, the word Budweiser is German for from Budvar. And for a time, the town of Budvar was the home of the royal brewery for the emperor of Rome. So when you bring up the American Budweiser to a Czech, yeah, you might wind up taking a licking. Okay, enough of the squabbling. Back to the fun, on to the next bar. By the way, I gotta tell you, I think the beer cheese and pygmy is working because right now I'm feeling pretty good. right? Can I have another one? Oh, everybody, come on, come on. Speaking of big gulps, we all remember when we were rookie drinkers and didn't know when enough was enough. Well, I think I found a case of that at this table full of tourists. Notice the guy leaving the table in a suspiciously sudden way. Where's he going? Oh, no. <laughs> He's thrown up. He couldn't keep up with me. Excuse me. Is he okay? that age, we called this puke and rally. My friend Steve McKenna, he was uh, really good at it. It's okay, you drank a lot. I didn't throw up. That's because I had my stinky cheese and pygmy. This is a pygmy. Let's get our young friend some water. Or maybe he should have had some of this stuff instead of chugging beer after beer. It's called brovka. Locals believe that this 72 proof sweet liqueur is effective in settling your stomach. No! That! that tasted like medicine mixed with sugar. But I don't need medicine after all. I ate stinky cheese and pygmy. So I'll be fine, right? I'm starting to have some doubts. Coming up, will I be able to pass a field sobriety test conducted by the devil himself? Then, get in here. Is it possible to get a buzz through osmosis? I'll find out. Okay, I've had the absinthe. I've had the stinky cheese and the pygmy. That's good pygmy. <laughs> Both are said to make me impervious to the effects of up to 15 beers. And the next day you won't be drunk. So now I'm in the process of putting that theory to the test. And outside, I find plenty of people happy to help me along including, and this is an official first on Three Sheets, fans of the show! Three Sheets fans! Woo Favorite episode? Oh, Champagne Region of France. Oh my god, you've seen it! Yes! <laughs> Chugging champagne! All right. That's awesome! I made that Frenchman drink... You made him chug! Oh, chug! Champagne. Oh, what kind of champagne? Oh, oh Christophe! Yes. Right. <laughs> so what's your second favorite episode? Belgium. Belgium? Yeah, oh, and the, guy and the guy who's stealing all the beers. The beer snatcher. The guy behind me keeps drinking my beers. He just picks them up and goes, oh, that's good. <laughs> so there you have it. Drink abroad, and you might end up drinking with uh, me. That's assuming, of course, that the network continues to pay me money to travel around the world and uh, drink with people. Three sheets! <laughs> Speaking of drinking, did the stinky cheese and pygmy help keep me sober? It's time to check in with Satan himself to see if I've reached my limit. 
Folklore has it that when, the, when a waitress thinks you've had, you've had too much to drink, when a waitress is, when a wait, ah, she asks you how many tails you see on the devil. If you see more than one, you have to go home. See ya. <laughs> That's right. I'm old enough to know when to stop. And I've also been around long enough to know that a little cheese and pork doesn't prevent drunkenness. Plus, I got an early morning tomorrow, and I'm sure I'll be feeling the effects. It's time to call it a night. Apparently, this place is supposed to have some sort of miraculous check hangover cure, which is great because I'm very hungover and I look like the Unabomber. Not good. It's way too early in the morning to be at a brewery, but here I am. It's the Chodavar Brewery in a small town outside of Prague. They've been making beer here since 1573. I'm cringing at the thought of drinking a beer right now, but as luck will have it, they got something else in store for me. Oh, hi. Thanks. I'm at a spa where <clears throat> you soak in beer and they mix in some hops and uh, yeast. And will I get a yeast infection from this? So when you have a hangover in Czech, they call it mom opitsi, which means it had to, literally to have a monkey. I have a monkey. He's hanging out in the tub with me because he has a monkey. We both drank last night. <laughs> Ow! That's what she's going to do to me. Thank you. Who would have thought a brewery that doubles as a spa kind of puts me in the mood for a beer and, strangely enough, a song. <laughs> and trust me, here in the Czech Republic, there are plenty of people open to that very same idea. There's no doubt about it. From the singing checks to the way over ritualized consumption of one of the nastiest drinks I've ever had to the world's first and foremost Pilsner beer. Good job. This is one place where you can even count on the devil himself to tell you when you've had too much. So I say, Nazdravi to all the Czech Republicans. Now that's the party I can support. Just gonna soak in the puppets. So now I get my massage. Do you guys give happy endings? <laughs> Is that good television? Is that good TV?